Hi everyone, my name is Dash Desai and I'm a lead developer advocate here at Snowflake. Welcome to part one of three of this demo series that will showcase how to use Snowpark for Python for data engineering. Snowpark is a developer framework for Snowflake that allows Python, Java, and Scala code to run directly in Snowflake. Snowpark has three main components, data frames, UDFs, and stored procedures. Part one of this demo will focus on client APIs, which includes data frames. Snowpark makes data processing on large amounts of data really easy by using the scale and performance of the Snowflake engine. To show you that, today I'll be working on data transformations on over 10 million records. For this demo, I'll be using the Amazon Review dataset from 2018. I'll specifically use data from the movies and TV categories, which has over 8.7 million reviews, and musical instruments category, which has over 1.5 million reviews. In total, we'll be working with approximately 10 million reviews. To get started with Snowpark, developers have the option to work with any IDE or notebook of choice. Here, I'm using Visual Studio Code. Snowpark comes pre-installed with thousands of open source packages from the Anaconda repository and has the Conda package manager integrated into it. Here I'm importing all the libraries I need, including Snowpark for Python. Now establishing a secure connection to Snowflake is easy. In this example, my use case calls for enterprise controls, so I'm using the AWS Secrets Manager to connect to Snowflake. Some of the other options for connecting to Snowflake include Okta, single sign-on, and multi-factor authentication. For local development purposes, you can also load credentials from a file, for example. After I load my credentials, a session object is created, and based on this session, you can see my environment details printed down below. Database and schema. Now I'm ready to get started with my analysis. First, I want to load the data into Snowpark data frames. Let's start with the Amazon reviews for movies and TV. Now, when working with Snowpark data frames, it is important to note that they are lazily executed, meaning unless an action like show, collect, or count is performed on a data frame, nothing gets executed on the server side. Here I'm using session.table API, which will return a Snowpark data frame, and then calling show, a sample size data is returned to the client. We can see that there are details about the movie and TV reviews, like the review time and review text. Then I'll do the same with the reviews for musical instruments. Now, after our data sets are loaded, let's start with some transformations on these data frames. Snowflake allows data engineering teams to ingest all types of data using a single platform, including structured, unstructured, and semi-structured data like JSON and XML. Here I can easily access the JSON data in style column in my movies and TV data set using Snowpark data frames, and I've shown the first 20 results of that output. Now let's combine the movies and TV with the musical instruments reviews data into a single data frame called Amazon Reviews All. You can see here that we now have a total of just over 10 million reviews in our combined data frame. As a data engineer, I might want to replace null values in my data. In this case, some users didn't leave text for their reviews, so we want to replace the missing text values with not available, for example, to make our data more readable. I'll first apply a filter to count how many rows have null values. Then I'll use fill and a API to replace those null values with not available. We can also print the number of records replaced, which we see here is 8,688. 
At this point, we've loaded our data into Snowpack data frames and completed some simple transformations to make our data more usable. Check out the next segments of this video series to learn about how to use user-defined functions and stored procedures in Snowpark for more data transformations.